Hello everyone, I'm Mike Turner with ADJ and we're here to do something a little different with this video today. From time to time, we get customers that when we're doing demos, ask some very specific questions about the application that they're using the fixtures in. And although we do the best to try to describe the features of the light when we do our little feature videos and whatnot, sometimes the best way to, to get a feel of the fixture is to actually sit through a demo. So this video may be a little bit longer than you're used to, but we'll definitely include links to the different times of which the subjects that I'm talking about in the comments below. That way you can skip along if there's a certain part that you wanna see. But let's go ahead and get started. I apologize in advance, you're probably gonna see a lot in the back of my head. Anyhow, so this is the ADJ Focus Profile. Just to recap, this is a fully featured moving head profile featuring a 400 watt white light LED with a color temperature of 6700 Kelvin on the white light LED. So when I'm showing this fixture off to people, I wanna show them the different things that this fixture can do and give them an understanding of how those features may apply in their application. So let's go ahead and start. So first of all, right here, I'm at about a 50% zoom. I'm not zoomed in, I'm not zoomed out, I'm right down the middle. Now this fixture will go as tight as seven degrees. So you're seeing it as the narrowest that it can go but it can go as wide as 45 degrees. As you can see, that is a huge difference and very minimal loss in output, if anything, noticeable at all. And as I go back and forth, you'll see I can go from highlighting one specific point to being able to highlight a very large area. So the zoom range from four to seven, or sorry, seven to 45 degrees is pretty incredible with this. Now, with this being a fully featured profile, the next thing that you're gonna be concerned about is its color mixing engine. This does have a full CMY color mixing engine, and I'll go ahead and we'll bring in the cyan right now. And I do have a three second fade in between some of these cues just so you can see how things blend. So this is full cyan. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more here to get a nice Congo blue with the magenta. And then I'm gonna take away the cyan and we're gonna go to full magenta. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of yellow and that's gonna give us our mixed red. Now, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but this is a nice, deep, saturate red. Sometimes the, the color temperature of the white light on the LED can contribute to the way that the dichroics work, and sometimes the red can look a little bit of a kind of an orangish tone, but again, this is a nice, deep, desirable red. I think it works great. I think this is an excellent color mix here. And then I'm gonna pull the magenta out and go to full yellow. And then another color that can sometimes be difficult to get a good, good color rendering of is green with CMI, CMY. And that's a nice solid green. Now we didn't stop with just the color mixing. We also gave you a variable CTO. Now what's nice about that, the variable CTO will allow you to kind of scroll through the different color temperatures of white to get the right color temperature for your application. So if you want 3K to kind of simulate tungsten lamps, it's in there. If you need 5K because you're doing a different type of maybe studio type application, it's in there and it's all on one channel. So that is the CTO. This next one I'm gonna show you is our color wheel. Now you might ask, well, Mike, you've got color mixing. Why are you using a color wheel? Well, the color wheel is a nice way to get some more saturate colors that you don't have to use subtractive color mixing to get. So this is a way that you can go direct to the color. The output's gonna be slightly more intense. But one of the cool things I noticed on this fixture, we can do color splits. And because the way that this color wheel is set up and the way that the focus is set up, you almost get kind of an ombre type look with the red at the bottom and the blue at the bottom. And you get that kind of mix. It can look great for sunset type scenes or anything like that. Just really kind of a cool little feature that it can do with the split colors. Now moving on from the colors, we're gonna to go to the rotating gobo wheel. Now this fixture has seven rotating replaceable gobos. Obviously the gobos for this are gonna be for aerial effects and different types of projection. The nice part I like about this is we use really high quality stepper motors on this. And what that means to you is we can rotate very, very, very slow without seeing the little kind of ticker notches or anything like that. Or we can go very fast for you know a high energy environment. So that's the first gobo. That's the second gobo. Really nice breakup, kind of reminds me of a stained glass type uh, effect there. This one's awesome. These are great for creating patterns and different things on the backdrop of the wall. 
This one is more of an aerial effect. If you shoot this out over the audience with a little bit of haze, because of the different size of the boxes and how they kind of fan out, it can look awesome when it's spinning. This one looks great. This is one I like to use sometimes when I'm doing fire or, or water effects with you know kind of mixing in the color wheel or some color. This is a classic. This is always gonna get used. And then finally this one, which kind of, like I said, can be used for water or fire or kind of just kind of creating a, a brick-like texture on the wall, which is really, really cool. Now this next wheel, this is a static wheel. So these don't rotate, you can't remove them. But because I've got two different gobos here, you can do some pretty cool gobo mo morphing effects that look awesome. So that's the first one. Second one, almost like a, um, kind of like a camouflage type pattern. That one looks great. Now this one is kind of unique because this one looks really, really cool when you throw on the prism and you start rotating the prism. Really, really fun gobo to work with. Pretty similar to that one as well. This one gives you really, really cool cylindrical effects. So if you shine this behind a front person in a band, you get like this circle effect behind them that creates like this tunnel. It's awesome. This one's always really fun, kind of unique. And then the last one, which I've never seen a gobo like this. This one looks pretty fun, kind of, it kind of looks like something you see in like an Atari game or, or Android or something like that. Now we do have a three facet circular prism and there's something that I'd like you to pay a little bit closer attention to. Now with the various types of light on the market there, uh, a lot of times people are experimenting with different amounts of facets. You'll see six facet, five facet. Uh, we've even got a fixture that has 24 facets. But what we found when it comes to this type of fixture, sticking with a three facet prism is gonna allow you to get the entire gobo projection multiplied times three. So if you notice, as you look closely, there's no portion that is more focused than the other. There's no cutoff in the optics or anything whatsoever. And again, as you note, I'm rotating this very slow. And if you look in the center, it kind of creates like almost this cool kaleidoscope type effect. It's pretty awesome. Now, in addition to the uh, circular prism, we do have a four facet linear prism. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the Audi logo. But again, that's just showing you how this works. Uh, when you spread it out a little bit more, you can get some pretty cool aerial effects on that. Now this next feature brings me to the frost. Oh, I layered them. Now included on your fixture is going to be a medium frost. Now a medium frost isn't generally designed to turn this fixture into a wash, but what it does do is give you some different textures for projection on the wall. So if you notice here, you can kind of see the gobo, but it's kind of blurred. But at the end of the day, you throw some color with this, and this is really nice for just kind of texturizing the wall, maybe in a ballroom or as a backdrop for an event. It's something that creates just a little bit of animation on the backdrop without having to uh, get a hard focus on the actual object itself, which is kind of nice. Now, speaking of animation, this fixture also has a full rotating animation wheel. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I was discussing how the color wheel has some pretty cool color splits. So what you're seeing in this, I've got it zoomed all the way out. I've got it just a little bit out of focus, and then I've got a color split between the green and the blue, and then I've got my animation wheel happening. Now, if you look closely, this is kind of like a nice water effect. Again, you can apply this effect to any of the colors. You can do your own color mixing, but it looks animated. It looks like there's something that's going on and you can even slow it down or speed it up to create different energy within your show. This next one shows the framing shutters. Now, that is something that's new for ADJ when it comes to this fixture. We have a four blade rotating framing shutter system with full blackout. So to give you an example of where that can be used, a lot of times that's used in theatrical performances where uh, you wanna highlight a particular thing on stage, maybe just a door, and you want the entire backdrop of the stage to be dark, but you just want that door illuminated for that scene. Or in this scenario where we have kind of a, a screen in the background and I kind of framed it out, so I'll, I'll kind of go back without it. Sorry. So that's without the framing, and then watch what happens when I throw the framing in with a little bit of color. 
So you see how that works. I've used a little bit of the rotation. I brought in all four blades to really kind of close that in. Now I'm gonna go into my next page here. And in fact, before they do that, I'll cut that off. And I'll give you kind of an idea as to how you can use some of the framing, how you can use the animation, how you can use gobos, kind of all in one to create kind of an effect. So this here, this is kind of a revisit of that water look I did, but what I did is I framed in the specific wall. Um, we've got a little bit more going on. It looks a little bit more like water. Again, just showing you how versatile all the different features of this light can work together to create a look. Uh, this next cue is gonna show it wide open. And the reason why I did that is I wanted you to see that there is a full uh, shutter cut on this. I'll go ahead and kick it in and you'll see they do go all the way across on all four blades and I can rotate that as well. So I'll go ahead and go back here. And this is just using some of the macros that are built in, just kind of creating a shape and just to try to kind of revisit, showing you that they can rotate, kind of get you an idea of how it looks. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is that rotation can make some things pretty fun. Imagine that you've got 12 to 24 of these all over your stage doing kind of this square look and they're each rotating in different directions, closing in, closing out. It can give you a very, very unique look on stage for rock and roll shows or pop performances or something of that line um, that you just couldn't get without having the framing shutters. So just some pretty cool features that we've got built into this. Uh, so again, guys, I appreciate you for sticking around for the whole video. This is the demo of the Focus Profile from ADJ. I'm sure you're gonna have some questions and we're all here to answer them. Feel free to visit us at www.adj.com and I'll see you guys soon.